Hello? Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yep, perfectly fine. Okay. okay so I'm going to start recording cool. this. So it's now recording, I think. It's like <laughs> Perfect. <recording. laughs> Good. Okay, we're officially recording. Yay! Hey, so... As you can tell from the title, some of this may surprise you, some of this may upset you. I mean, maybe maybe it doesn't surprise you and maybe um, how we see things is really aligned and similar, and that's awesome. But if you think differently and you see differently, that's awesome too. And I just really want this space, you know, on YouTube and other social media platforms that I use, I want it to be a safe space for all kinds of opinions and journeys. And as you'll hear in this interview, I, I just really want to embrace everybody <laughs> and our differences. So today I'm doing an interview with a friend and I'll leave her podcast down below. So our whole interview will be the podcast. So if you want to listen to it, this video will be that as well with some B-roll going while you listen to the interview in the background. But either platform, I do suggest to go support her. She's just getting started and she's an amazing person. She asked me to be her Christian interviewee interviewee and to speak from my perspective and she has a couple questions for me. I was just totally honest with her and didn't hide anything. I was really straightforward, as straightforward as I could be and I didn't really hold back. So I hope you can understand where I'm coming from in some of this and I want to open up the conversation. So please comment down below if you have any questions or if you agree or disagree with something. I'm totally fine with that, but let's get into it. First of all, just tell us a little bit about you and what you do with your life and all the fun things. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll start at the beginning. <laughs> uh, so I was born in Tampa, Florida. Uh, but shortly after that, I, after I was born, my parents moved to North Carolina and I have one older brother and two younger siblings. And I grew up in a Christian household and we were always, um, really involved in church. And I also have Canadian citizenship due to my native heritage. Um, which is the Chippewa of the Thames First Nation. That's I'm, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the Loon Clan. We're all crazy. <laughs> um, and my, so my father's Native American and Mexican and my mother is white, probably mostly French. And so I moved to Nashville when I was 16 when um, I started attending Belmont, Belmont University. And then I graduated with my Bachelor of Music in 2014 and took off on tour for nearly three and a half years like straight, and I'm a creator. And so for years, my main source of creativity was focused on music and um, specifically my, my Christian music project with my sister. And we recently won the Juno Award for the best Christian album of the year. Um, Congratulations. Thank you, appreciate that. So over the last year, my life has really opened me up to other creative outlets, um, like my own solo music and growing my social media presence on like several platforms, including my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I create art through my writing. I draw and I paint and there really isn't anything in the arts I would really say no to. Um, I'm married to my best friend in the whole world. His name is Adam and we live in Nashville and we're raising, uh, you know, our crazy wild little fur child, uh, Patchouli. Adorable. <laughs> She's insane, but we love her. Um, and lastly, if anyone's wondering, I am a INTJ, Enneagram 3, and a Virgo. So there you go. <laughs> nice. I'm actually type 2. Oh, are you? Yes, I am. I've actually very recently decided to, like, delve into... The um, Enneagram. <laughs> Yes, yes, very recently. So it's all very, very interesting, all the types of people, which is actually a large reason why I wanted to start a podcast like this because, yeah. I mean, on a daily basis, you meet so many different people who have so many different hobbies or beliefs or... Yeah, like, it's true. And so, like, why not delve into it? Why not talk to all these people and just, like, let them use this as their platform to, like, just talk about themselves? Why not? Yeah. Oh, people love talking about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very passionate about, like finding all the intricacies of all different people too, so it's very fun. Absolutely. Um, so the one thing that I wanted to talk to you specifically about today yeah. is your faith, and yeah. uh, you did mention already you do 
um, music with your sister and mm-hmm. solo. Um, so is Christian music, is that something you've always wanted to do or how did that come about for you? So yeah, um, good question. It was <laughs> my dream from uh, a really young age until I was 14 and then I found uh, I found musical theater. So I've always been in music, but yeah, I wanted to do Christian music until I was about 14 and then I found musical theater and then for about two or so years, I was taking musical theater actually very seriously and I trained every day of the week and was in like tons of musicals and I almost went to Pace University in New York to study musical theater, but that's like another story for another day. Um, <laughs> but um, from age like 17 and 18, that's when my sister and I, um, I started, we started doing music together, um, more mainstream music actually. And then we kept running into Christian music circles and we felt like, we felt pulled to change directions and do overtly Christian music. Um, and we've done that, we've done this up until the present, um, but it's honestly, it's honestly been a tough road. Um, the Christian industry and the church can be quite unforgiving, even though it kind of contradicts who Jesus is. Um, <laughs> so I would say I've almost always wanted to do Christian music. Uh, honestly, up until recently, we still, I mean, still love Jesus and love worshiping him. But if, if we had to do it all over again, uh, we might not have chosen the Christian industry. Um, and that's probably not what you were expecting to hear, but. Um, <laughs> That's absolutely true. I, I figure, like, with Christian music, it's usually something that you just, like, it's, like, where you start. So it's interesting that you you didn't even start with Christian music. You started with mainstream music. That's, yeah. That's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. I mean, I wanted to do Christian music when I was, like, a kid. And then, you know, I mean, that's, like, what I knew. So it was comfortable. And then I did mainstream with my sister. And But I think all along in the beginning, I was like, ah, oh, we, like, you know, kind of were, like, preaching from stage. And so we felt... A little uncomfortable that we were so like I don't know we spoke very Christianese at that time because um, we were like little babies um, right. and so it, it was just kind of natural for us just how we grew up to go into the Christian music and then as we continued to grow into like our 20s we actually kind of went more the opposite where it was like hard to fit into the Christian music whether it was musically or just conversationally or you know, how we how even how we present ourselves and how we dress and things like that like we we didn't seem to we're almost we're growing out of the christian industry where we we grew into it initially if that makes sense yeah well i honestly from someone who doesn't come from a religious background i kind of see christian music usually being like older people yeah so i would imagine you being a younger you and your sister being a little younger you might get the look of like is this for real? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. And that's kind of been part of it, right? But I mean, Canada has been the most supportive, obviously, since the Juno Award situation. Um, But yeah, it has, it's been a struggle being two girls in Christian industry. It's just, yeah, you have to work like extra hard. Right. Whose idea was it to go into, I mean, doing music with your sister? I mean, is that like comfortable or was it your idea, her idea? So yeah, I mean, that's, Again, that's like a whole another story that's like why I stopped doing musical theater, but essentially it wasn't really either of of our ideas to do it together, but we both auditioned for this group and the group ended up falling apart, but we both got into it and then we're like, well, and because we got into that, because I got into that, the people, like the producer and everything that was part of the deal, whatever, they said, if Lauren, if you want to go to college, you have to go to college in Nashville. And then the only school in Nashville that I auditioned for, because I was auditioning for musical theater, was at... Belmont and Belmont was the only school that I auditioned for anything more than just musical theater So I auditioned for the the commercial voice program as well Anyway, long story got into that and then I was like, well, we're doing this music thing together It, it was like kind of one thing after the next made it to where it was like Well, this is kind it kind of landed in our lap kind of situation if that makes sense Um, so it wasn't really either of I of our ideas um, To do music together. We were sisters. So it just it was natural right and you guys work well together or like I can't imagine if I worked with my brother it might go horribly wrong yeah <laughs> so there's seasons where we we get along better and get along worse like so we're we're best friends but then there's seasons where like we, we don't get along and it's interesting being in a creative process with her um, because we have ebbs and flows of creativity and our relationship um, right. so I think we create really great stuff together I don't think I would ever like that is probably the one strong truest things that we create really well together um, but I think it sometimes it did put strain on our relationship but right. yeah it, we have to like figure out we're always figuring out the the balance yeah and I mean 
at some point it's probably got to make your relationship pretty strong to be doing something you guys are passionate about together. For sure. Yeah. Well, we've uh, had ups and downs. Like, like I said, there's like, there's more to every little thing I'm like telling you, you know, <laughs> there's like so much, yeah. there's so much life. Um, but yeah, I mean, she at one point um, quit the band and then I had to like refigure out my life, which is part of why I started doing, you know, my own creative stuff. Even my YouTube channel kind of came out of that like brokenness um, and needing something for myself. And you know, it, so there, there have been major crashes and burns, but there's been really major highs too. Yeah, well, I mean, when isn't there, right? That's just right. part of life. <laughs> true, true. Um, how does your husband feel about this? I mean, he was like showing you off on Instagram when you guys were at the Juno Awards. It was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously he's so proud and he's our drummer. So he was like, oh, cool. yeah, along for the ride in more than just being a husband. Um, so yeah, I mean, he was he was very pumped, very excited. It At that time, my sister, had was she had quit at that point so it was kind of like this weird thing of like well this is like very bittersweet and then shortly after she basically was like hey I do want to create again with you so we're officially we're officially back on but at the time it was kind of like a bittersweet thing and he was with me through all of that like kind of emotional up and down so obviously he's very happy but he knew what it what it felt like to me, it being kind of a little bittersweet. Right, absolutely. So you guys actually are like officially back together as of recent, the, the band. Yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, so it's, it's, it wasn't like that long of a breakup essentially, but um, it, things are changing and we're moving forward. We had a lot of, like I said, it was a tough road. Doing Christian music is not, not easy. Um, and so we ha we're basically just like reimagining what the future looks like for us as a band. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so the whole idea behind this podcast is to bring different aware to bring awareness to different groups and as we've been talking about, you are a Christian. Yeah. Which can be like a super touchy subject for some people. Yeah. Um, you know, believers, non believers or people of different faith. Yeah. Um do you ever feel like you have to hide your faith? Hmm, well, I, I would say I'm never afraid to to admit I love Jesus and He's my Lord and Savior. However, there are times I'm I am nervous to claim Christianity. I'm more than comfortable with people knowing that like what I believe in, but I don't want to be associated with small-minded, judgmental humans, which unfortunately Christians can sometimes or often be. And again, that's not Jesus. Um, that's that's not who he is, but that's imperfect people living out of fear-based living. Um, and I want people to know I love them and embrace them no matter who they are or what they believe in. And that's who Jesus is, and that's who I aspire to be like. The other scenario where I might be tempted to, to hide my faith, I guess, is actually around other Christians. Because sometimes when other Christians know you're a Christian, um, it, in a totally not justifiable way, it, it, it becomes seemingly more appropriate to judge you, like to judge other people. Like if there is somebody's a Christian and they know somebody else is a Christian, they like feel like they have the right to judge them. And I don't, I don't really fit into any box and I used to try so hard to fit in one, but I just, I just don't. And I'm not the perfect example of a Christian or anybody and, um, and nobody is, but Jesus is. So yeah. Again, I'm very open about my faith and what I believe, but sometimes being labeled a Christian is is like a it's a hard microscope to live under. If that makes sense. Right. Well, and I feel like the word Christian can be very loaded. I mean, even as a non-believer, when For someone sure. says they're a Christian, I do get a little nervous. Like, are you judging me? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's just kind of a natural stigma, which is kind of unfortunate because even as someone who's not really a believer, I shouldn't really put that kind of pressure on somebody else to just assume that they're judging me because of their faith. I'm like, that's not fair for me to do. Right. <laughs> it's like everybody has to check in with themselves. Like, I just think if everybody just checked in, it's like, am I judging them? <laughs> like, do I have assumptions? Do I have, like, expectations for them to be right. this way or that? Like, no matter where you're coming from or what you believe in, I just, you know, it's kind of an, putting people in an unfair position. We're all, we've all done it, you know? Right. But it's just about, like, being self-aware. Right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Do you ever feel like, um, if you're ever like in a group of other Christians that they might like try and like one up you. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, 
I feel like I'm not sure like I guess when I was younger maybe the one up like I'm like they would try to be like more spiritual or more like in the know or like I don't know like have a, a super uh, like spiritual relationship with Jesus I feel like in that way yes maybe when I was younger I would feel intimidated in that way because um, uh -huh. I because that's what I cared about but now I I'm definitely more scared of being like oh okay, this Christian knows I'm a Christian. Uh, now I, I really have to be careful with like, you know, what I say or like, you know, what I tell them. And I mean, obviously like, I mean, you know that I just try to be as honest as I can with everybody and, you know, just being just me. Um, yeah. But it does make me nervous. It makes me like, kind of like think a little bit. I'm like, oh, right. So, and a lot of it, like what I'm wearing or like just a lot of little things that, I think of and I, I shouldn't I, we shouldn't have to and I'm working on that and I'm like healing um, through some some like spiritual mental blockage right with when yeah, it comes to yeah. other Christians but um, but yeah <laughs> that actually leads perfectly into my next question because you recently did your YouTube video um, answering assumptions from your viewers yeah and, uh, someone had said that you had slipped in your face which, um, is <laughs> yeah. ridiculous and I love right. the way that you went off on that video um, <laughs> but do you think there's a lot of expectation to live like within a certain mold as a Christian yeah <laughs> I do like a lot um not not only though like as a Christian but for the majority of my life um, my identity was being a Christian music artist and right. that comes with an even bigger um like microscope, basically. Um, and the things that have been said to my face, as like you saw in that video, like by other Christians, the things that like I've been told and things that have been said about me would probably like blow your mind to be like, whoa, a Christian said that? Like, I can't believe that. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but, but obviously there are so many amazing people and amazing Christians and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of the family of Christ as we call it, but there are there are also a lot of bad eggs too. So, um, so yeah, I will, I would say there is a lot of expe expectation to, to live a certain way. Yeah. As a Christian. Yeah. And I mean, even you mentioned it earlier, like living within this box that you feel like is kind of set up for you is really difficult to do. And then you do put your life on social media and your, mm. your music online for people to see. And it's kind of ridiculous that people are going to judge you for doing something first that makes you passionate and second yeah. for know doing something that is like within your you know beliefs and mm. something that you feel so strongly about I mean how is anybody gonna knock you down for I mean it's not like you're doing anything illegal right I know I know that's what like I have to like keep coming back to because it can make you get in your head you know when people oh, say yeah, things absolutely. and push especially when it comes to like faith and stuff like you're talking about people's like potentially what they believe to be their like eternal salvation like that's in, that's intense like you yeah. know i mean i feel like people a lot of people obviously are what are the, what do they, what do they call them like the the keyboard heroes or whatever it is they're they feel like they have oh, yeah, yeah. power behind a keyboard um yeah trolls but, yeah <laughs> trolls essentially yeah <laughs> um so I, you have to that's what you kind of get into whenever you put yourself online and I'm comfortable with that. I feel, I, I do feel strong enough to take it, but it does kind of get in your head sometimes. Well, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're human and if someone's going to come at you with negativity, you, you, you feel you the effect. You take so much of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, for a lot of people who are not religious, such as myself, and I even mentioned this earlier, um, yeah. there's like kind of a stigma about judgment of those who are religious. Yeah. Um, like, what is your response to that for like a, for like a non-believer such as myself. Yeah. Um, well, it makes me sad that somebody would feel judged, you know, if they're not religious or anybody, no matter what they believe in. Like, that's just like, it breaks my heart to, that somebody, that anybody would feel like nervous about, you know, who they are or what they believe, you know? Um, right. And I can really only speak for myself, um, you know, when it comes to being, and from my own perspective, being a Christian woman and say that, Christians who judge are most likely living under, and I've said this, I said this earlier, but they're living under fear-based living and are not looking at the heart of Jesus. So for ages, for like for ages, people preach on like single verses instead of looking at the whole picture, much less the heart of Jesus. And when I say verse, like Bible verse, 
Um, right. And the whole freaking Bible talks about love um, and right. to fear not, like, like over and over and over, like do not fear. And that's all that judging is. Like when you get to the bottom of it, fear is just fear of, it's just fear of what's different. Like judging is just seeing something that is different from you and like it making you uncomfortable, like fear of it challenging you and your belief system. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but it makes me sad, I guess is the, is the answer is like, I don't like it. I, I mean, it makes me, it, it breaks my heart that people don't feel like accepted for who they are. Yeah. Do you think that these people who are like living in fear, do you think it's because that they're not used to seeing different types of people within their communities or that they just have like some sense of being closed-minded because I mean I'm not going to say that these people are bad people yeah they may be judging for their own personal reasons or just like not knowing altogether right I will say I mean it's a lot of like again this is from my own this is from a Christian perspective so I can only speak on that um like I, I will say growing up in church like you are not really encouraged to ask questions and so I think it puts this fear of being wrong. So you don't like, I, I, I'm exploring this right now. I'm like going through this own season of my life where I'm, I'm really being, I'm really okay <laughs> with being wrong. Um, yeah. And we're not, we're not taught that like at all, especially like no human is, but then especially like, I think Christians in the church, like you have to basically agree with everything. And if you get one thing wrong, like it, it, it can affect your eternal salvation. And that's like, that's, that's not how it goes. Um, right, it's right. all just minuscule detail. Um, like the Christian faith is, you know, believing Jesus came and he died and he rose again and believing in him. Um, it's not about the little details. And I think so many people just, I, I don't know, I feel like are just not taught how to question things. Therefore, if anybody's different, they think they are, are wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it yeah, just is I put into the perspective of them being wrong versus just different. Absolutely. And I think, like you said, everybody, that's a thing for everybody, even myself. It's taken a long time to be able to admit that it's okay to be wrong and to yeah. like have the hard conversation and ask the hard question because at the end of the day, that's only teaching you more. And if you don't ask those questions, you just stay... You, yeah, you know, close-minded. <laughs> yeah, you just, you don't grow. You can't grow if you, if you don't ask and if you don't, if you're not curious and you're not, if, if you can't be wrong, like you can't ever be right. <laughs> that sounds so cliche, Absolutely. but. Yeah, no, that's a hundred percent. Um, so what is the one thing you hear, what is the one thing you hear most often as a Christian that like really gets on your nerves or not, maybe not on your nerves, but bothers you? There's a topic. Um, can I say a topic? Yeah, absolutely, okay. whatever you want. Okay, <laughs> so um, the topic that bothers me, which is probably what I'll, I will get the most like flack back about, is um, the purity culture and um, the church's obsession with sex, essentially. Um, okay. Literally, this topic drives so many Christians and non-Christians away from the heart of Jesus when it's really like sexuality or like purity is really only mentioned in the Bible like six times. And Do you want to um, explain what that might be for anybody who is listening who doesn't know what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see. Purity culture, uh, if you've ever heard like, you know, modest is hottest. That's like part of like purity culture. Um, purity culture is like, it can be, it can be very non-feminist. <laughs> um it's very much like the, like they talk about like saving yourself for marriage, even saving, it can go as far as like saving and holding hands for marriage. Um, but it puts a lot of pressure on both men and women on yeah. um, basically their salvation being tied up with their sexuality. And it, again, it's a big topic, like a very right, big right. topic. Um, and I just, I. So my, my point with that is that like a lot of people say that like church is scared of, you know, the topic of sex. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like, I feel like they always talk about sex. Um, <laughs> just never in a positive, in, in, in a real positive way, um, actually. Right, right. And so, like I said, it's only mentioned in the Bible like six times. And those verses are not even like the clearest of verses either. And... Honestly, I believe Jesus is a feminist. <laughs> what? Blast me, no. Um, but I really do. I really, I really do. And I think he would be 
um, or is repulsed by the damage we've done as Christian culture when we turn our brothers and sisters away from learning and leaning into who Jesus is. And that's, it's, like I said, it's a huge topic I could get into, but yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to have a whole other conversation about this because this is actually, I've never heard of that and it sounds like something worth talking about. Oh yeah, about. it's, we could definitely, we could do like several podcasts on this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, obviously even sex in general is just something that people are trying to talk about more and True. normalizing it and not making it sound like it's this scary thing yeah. that ruin your whole life and it also opens up the topic of like body image and just all for sure exactly <laughs> it literally it literally goes into so many different topics so yeah okay so we'll table that one <laughs> but I'm gonna write it down first. <laughs> cool down. bookmark that one <laughs> Yeah. What is your favorite thing about being a Christian? Jesus. <laughs> Hands down. Um, so, oh, okay. like, he's why I am Christian. I mean, I think, I mean, that's truly what it's about. Um, that's it. That's the whole point. He came to the earth. He died and rose again. And as a Christian, I believe that I have eternal life in heaven with Jesus after this life. So, I have that assurance. But also, another core belief is that um, that it's more than just a religious belief, but a personal relationship that I get to have with the God of the universe. And I think that's, that's pretty dang special. And, um, yeah. and I don't have to wait until the afterlife to experience communication in a direct line or relationship with God. Yeah, absolutely. I think that obviously, like I said, this could be a pretty controversial topic, but, um, a lot of people have trouble thinking that you know exactly what's going to happen after this life, but there's got to be some comfort in knowing yeah i mean exactly what's gonna happen and you just have this undying faith and i think that's amazing i think that's incredible yeah <laughs> yeah well thank you i that's i mean that is the best part i think you know for being a christian is that just the reassurance of of yeah. something yeah absolutely i think i think that could be a tricky one for some people especially right. after i mean you've heard the debates i've heard the debates yeah. everybody has an opinion but it is I mean, it's just so good to know that some people like you are just so strong in your faith and you're willing to talk about that and just like yeah. kind of open up to people who might not have any idea about your faith. Yeah, That's cool. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could share one thing or one topic with the Christian community, what would you say? <laughs> um, such a loaded question. <laughs> but I... I, I kind of, <laughs> um, I, I think, I think I would like just basically say over and over again, um, do not fear, do, do not fear your intuition that God gave you. Do not fear different beliefs. Do not fear being wrong. Like I said, that's huge. Christians are so scared to be wrong about anything and it shuts us down spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and creatively. Um, that, ha that literally happened to me. Um, and as soon as I was okay with being wrong um it just opened me up in a whole whole nother level and my relationship god has just like been soaring since um right. but i would say do not fear like for even for other people we're supposed to love people um but we have to remember that god loves them even more and to to not shut out anyone from the family of jesus to not shut people out to look at jesus and don't fear but love and anyway i could go on but that's i think i think that's all like that's the main gist of what i would say is like do not fear love and know that god loves like everybody even more than like you could possibly love them <laughs> mentioned intuition which you know I I have a very very strong intuition but do you think that's an issue within the Christian community to kind of ignore your intuition a hundred and ten percent yeah <laughs> oh yeah um that's that's part of the, that's part of the problem I feel like a lot of Christians are like especially now are they have natural um reactions to certain things whether they're taught or we read them or we hear things and we're like Ugh, that like I, I don't know like something about that doesn't seem right to me and we just ignore it because we're like taught if you question something you're like just I don't know your whole eternal salvation is just like in turmoil <laughs> um really yeah so yeah I feel like our intuitive um, spirit and our, yeah, is just like suppressed a lot. 
uh, that's seriously, that's what I'm going through right now. And what I've been going through the past like several months is that trusting myself. And again, that's another, that kind of goes into the purity culture thing is like, basically we're taught to not trust ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. There's one Bible verse that kind of people run with a lot is um, it says the, basically it's saying like the heart is deceitful. And so, so many people go on to say like, and it's preached to basically you can't trust yourself. Um, and so therefore you, <laughs> you, can't trust your questions or doubts either like your questions and doubts if it goes against anything that's like taught in the church it's like from the devil like it's like from the enemy essentially um yeah right i know <laughs> that's like i mean there's a whole new there's a whole new generation that's like being born and there's so many people who've grown from that but that's been my experience i i don't want to say everybody but that's been my experience right, right but i mean i'm just thinking i mean as you're saying this wouldn't it be uh, I don't know part of God's plan to have you question things and absolutely trust your instincts and stuff like that. Oh, totally. I mean, that I absolutely believe that, and that's what I'm like learning. I'm like, wait a second. Like, yeah, as yeah. a Christian, I feel like hopefully most everybody. Ho hopefully, we all get to the point if we haven't from the beginning, get to the point where we're like, wait a second what's God's heart? Like, what does he think about this? Like, you know, using prayer and using, you know, our relationship with him and not just like hearing from somebody, like what they say and what they believe in. Cause essentially, I mean, you can't, you, you have to, you have to make decisions on your own too. Like right. you can't just take what anybody says and like run with it, no matter who it is. Um, yeah. Well, and I would assume if you're, if you're Christian, if you're religious, that if your religion isn't just within the walls of your church, I mean, it's everywhere with you. So, right should you should take that and like I know right you you should preach God. why don't you <laughs> preach <laughs> yeah I mean it's, it's true <laughs> that's exactly what need, the message that needs to get out there though all right that's this is so interesting to me this <laughs> like the whole idea behind this podcast is happening right now because like I know things about religion but like I went to a couple of different churches when I was a kid and I just like felt like it was pushed so hard on me that I kind yeah. of pushed back and I just ended up being like this doesn't make any sense and just like not yeah doing it I guess but right that's, that's a whole different topic <laughs> <laughs> that's when I interview you <laughs> so uh my last question um is if you could say anything to a non-believer mm. what would you say that I love you and you may not believe in God and that doesn't change my love for you it doesn't change um, the fact that I believe that God loves you too, um, and you may, you may not believe that he exists, or maybe you do, but um, I, I also want to say that you're welcome to ask questions, you're welcome to be curious, um, and that you're accepted for who you are. I'll never shut you out, and neither will the God that I strongly love and I believe in. He will never shut you out and that you're loved. I love that. You're so nice. You're such a great person. Yeah. I've been like <laughs> loving following you on YouTube and Instagram and like being able to sit down and talk with you. It's like, this is awesome. Oh my so gosh, cool. you're so sweet. Uh, this was this was amazing for me. Like I said, I just, it, it's so good to, to be able to talk about things in um, a really, a very open, clean slate kind of uh, platform. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's exciting that like, no. If anything, nobody's gonna listen to this. So even if <laughs> this is just wrong, for me and you. <laughs> exactly. Nobody will know. No, I'm excited for you. I think this is, is an amazing thing. I definitely want to tell everybody about the podcast because I think it's important for so for everybody to hear from different perspectives and to um, to open themselves up to uh, to possibly hear something that they they've never heard of before. Um, I think that's when we grow, like we were saying. I think that's when we truly like thrive as humans. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. And <laughs> I'm like two thousand percent ready to have our conversation in the next one because, like, you already <laughs> piqued my interest, and I'm like, can we just talk about it now? Like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely have that conversation. Yeah.